evening all and I'm certainly glad to have each of you online with us. Uh, if you would, let's all be turning to the book of John chapter six. I would like for us to uh, take note of a few verses there. Again, that's John chapter six. But before we do get into our text, I would like to point out really the context of what we'll be discussing. Uh, we see in the first 15 verses of this chapter, uh, the miracle where Jesus feeds the 5,000. And we see that he uses five loaves of barley, or five barley loaves rather, and two small fishes to feed this great multitude. And after they had all gotten their fill, there remained 12 baskets worth of fragments or leftovers. We see that in verse 15, Jesus perceived that these men wanted to make him forcibly their king. And because of this, he fled to the mountain alone to hide, to get away from this. After all, we know that was not his purpose on the earth. And then we see in verses 16 through 21 that <clears throat> at evening, his disciples boarded a ship, and they crossed the sea. Now, in addition to a great wind that was blowing, they eventually saw Jesus walking on the water. Now, they eventually received him into their ship, and upon doing so, they were able to reach their destination, which is the intended shore. Now, this would bring us to our text of John chapter 6, verses 22 through 27. So keep all these things in mind as we proceed through our text. Again, John chapter 6, verse 22. It says there, the day following, when the people which stood on the other side of the sea saw that there was none other boat there, save that one wherein to his disciples were entered, and that Jesus went not with his disciples into the boat, but that his disciples were gone away alone. Howbeit, there came other boats from Tiberias nigh unto the place where they did eat bread. After that, the Lord had given thanks. When the people, therefore, saw that Jesus was not there, neither his disciples, they also took shipping and came to Capernaum, seeking for Jesus. And when they had found him on the other side of the sea, they said unto him, Rabbi, when camest thou hither? And Jesus answered them and said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, ye seek me, not because ye saw the miracles, but because ye did eat of the loaves and were filled. Labor not for the meat which perisheth, but for that meat which endureth unto everlasting life, which the Son of Man shall give <clears throat> unto you, for him hath God the Father sealed. So as we've considered this passage, we saw that the multitude that he fed searched for Jesus. They saw that the disciples' ship was on the opposite end of the sea. And they reasoned because of that, that the disciples left. But since they knew Jesus left first, they knew that they reasoned anyway, that he was not with his disciples. So they concluded that he must be present somewhere near them, verse 22. And evidently, the news of this miracle had already spread because in verse 23, it says more ships came to where he had fed the 5,000. But then in verse 24, we see that this multitude in search of Jesus went to Capernaum as well. And there they found him, verse 25. Upon meeting him and asking him, Jesus points out their motivation for their search in coming for him. In verse 26, they, we see that Jesus pointed out that they wanted more food. The only reason they're coming after him is because of the food. Though the, wit, the, throw, though the multitude had witnessed the performing of Jesus' miracle, 
they because of this rather they reasoned within themselves that he was indeed a prophet however their belief did not yield obedience instead it led to their desire to fulfill fleshly uh, appetites they wanted a full belly now jesus corrects them in verse 26 he told them not to labor for the food that perishes but instead labor for that spiritual sustenance now did jesus tell them not to work at all don't worry about the food that like the bread and the fish don't worry about that sort of thing no that's not what he's saying the focus should not be on physical sustenance. Our first priority should be seeking after, obeying, and continuing to seek after God and his righteousness. Matthew chapter 6, verse 33. So the focus should be the spiritual sustenance. Though as physical beings, we do need physical sustenance. Now, we would note that the multitude did come to the correct source. They came to Jesus the Christ. However, they had an incorrect reason and motivation. As we said, they wanted a full belly and not necessarily salvation. All of that being said, I wanted to zero in on the last phrase of verse 27 that we read. Jesus is the sealed one of God. Again, verse 27, the latter part, for him, speaking of Jesus, hath God the Father sealed. What does it mean to be sealed? Well, according to the International Standard Bible Encyclopedia, this term, and I quote, one of the most important uses of sealing in antiquity was to give a proof of authenticity and authority to letters, royal commands, etc. It served the purpose of a modern signature at a time when the art of writing was known to only a few. Thus, we find Jezebel, who wrote letters in Ahab's name and sealed them with his seal. 1 Kings chapter 21, verse 8. Furthermore, in the New Testament, the main ideas in the figure are those of authentication, ratification and security the believer in christ is said to quote set his seal that god is true john chapter 3 verse 33 which is to attest the veracity of god to stamp it with the believer's own endorsement and confirmation the father has sealed the son i.e authenticated him as the bestower of life-giving bread John chapter 6, verse 27. Again, that's taken from the ISBE. If I remember correctly, page 2,709. Because Jesus is the, the one sealed of God, no one else can fill this role. Thus, who, who better to be sealed or given God's authority than the eternal word himself, the second person of the Godhead, John chapter 1, verse 1. Jesus himself stated that he had been given all authority or power in heaven and earth, Matthew chapter 28, verse 18. The Father stated that Jesus was sealed at his transfiguration, Matthew chapter 17, verse 5, which reads, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Hear ye him. We see this further shown in Acts chapter 3, verse 22. Acts chapter 7, verse 37. Mark chapter 9, verse 7. And Luke chapter 9, verse 35. Again, the Father has sealed or given authority to Jesus the Christ. Now, a few things that this affects and even makes possible, because Jesus is the sealed one of God, there's, there are several things I would like to take note of. In John chapter 6, verses 31 through 36, we see that Jesus is the only 
bread of life or the life-giving bread. Again, John chapter 6, verses 31 through 36, which reads, Our fathers did eat manna in the desert. As it is written, he gave them bread from heaven to eat. Then Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Moses gave you not that bread from heaven, but my Father giveth you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is he which cometh down from heaven and giveth life unto the world. Then said they unto him, Lord, evermore, give us this bread. And Jesus said unto them, I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never hunger, and he that believeth on me shall never thirst. But I send unto you that ye also have seen me and believe not. So again, we point out, though they came to the proper source, they didn't have proper motivation. And though they'd seen the miracle, they didn't believe. And because Jesus is that bread of life, in a broad sense, we become partakers of that bread of life when we ingest or read and study God's word. In a specific sense, this is accomplished when we observe the Lord's Supper. John chapter 6, verses 53 through 56. Secondly, or next, rather, because Jesus is the seal of God, we consider Hebrews chapter 1, verses 1 and 2. Jesus is the only way that God speaks to mankind today. God, who at sundry times and in diverse manners spake in times past unto the fathers by the prophets, hath in these last days spoken unto us by his Son, whom he hath appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the worlds. Again, God is using Jesus, his sealed one, to speak to mankind today. There is no other way. This is why Galatians chapter 1, verses 6 through 9, at least one way that this passage has so much force. It would mean nothing if... There was not someone who was authorized to bring God's will to us. Thus, anyone who attempts to do the same thing in their own name is worthy of being cut off from God, cursed. Because no one else has the authority to speak on God's behalf. And third, we know from John chapter 14, verse 6, Jesus stated, I am the way the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father, but by me. Thus, Jesus Christ, the sealed one of God, is the only way to God, that is, the Father. This is accomplished by becoming a member of his spiritual body. Through baptism, one is added to the church, or that spiritual body, Acts chapter 2, verse 42. Christians make up this body, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 27. And thus, Christ is the body's Savior, Ephesians chapter 5, verse 23. This is also seen in Jesus as being our mediator and intercessor, 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 5, Hebrews chapter 8, verse 6, chapter 9, verse 15, and chapter 12, verse 24. Again, he is our mediator from those passages. As our intercessor, we see this in Romans chapter 8, verse 34. And Hebrews chapter 7, verse 25. And then this is also seen by the fact that Jesus is the author of eternal salvation. 2 Timothy chapter 10 or chapter 2, verse 10, and Hebrews chapter 5, verse 9. We, we have considered that Jesus is the only sealed of God. He has been sealed by God. And we have considered what that means. God has given him all authority on earth, all authority in heaven. We have seen that through various texts tonight. Now, to the Christian, this should bring us great comfort and great joy. However, to those outside of Christ, this should serve as a spur to fundamentally and ultimately obey the gospel and become a recipient 
of each of these different blessings. Now, there's certainly a much more rich study, but time will not permit me to go further. I do appreciate your attention. I hope this study has been beneficial to you. Thank you.